Welcome to the Executive America Podcast, where we speak with the country's most influential industry leaders on the business and economic development issues taking place nationally. You can stay up to date with all of our content, including our publications, newsletters, and podcasts by visiting www.executiveamerica.com and clicking on subscribe. Today's guest is Baseload Energy CEO, James Sykes. James brings over 15 years of Athabasca Basin uranium exploration experience to the Baseload team, most notably leading the discovery for NextGen's aero deposit and providing invaluable work on Hathor's Rough Rider deposits. He has been directly and indirectly involved with the discovery of over 550 million pounds of U308 in the Athabasca Basin. James, thanks for joining us today. Hi, Jesse. Thanks for having me on the show. So before we get into your company, Baseload Energy, do you want to just give us an overview of the uranium market and the opportunity of the resource? Yeah, absolutely. So with the uranium market, um, you know, it, it's been kind of in the down uh, downtrend for quite a while now, but it's always been a question of if, or sorry, when the price would come back up, not if the price would come back up. Uh, we've got so many utilities out there that use uranium as fuel, so nuclear energy, and the the demand has actually grown over the past 10 to 20 years. So we've got more nuclear demand out there. If a lot of investors are are aware of what happened in 2006, the uranium spot price just jumped through the roof. And that was because there were certain fundamentals that uh, really initiated that whole price run. Looking at today, so 15, 14 years later, those fundamentals exist now. However, there, the whole situation is much more improved. We've got we've got more demand. We've got far less supply because back in 2006, you had companies in Australia, in Africa, states, Canada, Russia. These guys were all producing. Who's producing nowadays? Nobody. The two largest uranium producers in the world have curtailed their operations. You don't see that in any other commodity. So this is a very unique situation. This is this is the right opportune time. For investors to come in and really make a killing off this impending uh, this impending wave of of just uh, the uranium price run, it's going to happen. It's starting to happen. We've seen it. Uh, we've seen this spot price take off in, in March. It jumped from about twenty four dollars to thirty four dollars. So this is this is a great opportunity for any investor to get into the market. And so, how did Baseload Energy get started? Uh, Baseload Energy was the brainchild of Stephen Stewart. He's the CEO behind Ore Finders and some other ventures. And he's always wanted to get into the uranium market because, again, he sees the same fundamentals. It's really not a question of if the price will come back up, it's when. So earlier this year, he saw that everything seemed to be playing out uh, the way that, you know, the way that us in the industry have all waited for this to happen. So he decided to get the ball rolling on this, on this venture. Uh, he contacted me having seen my my resume and yeah so we just we hit it off and we decided to go forward with this excellent and can you tell us about the projects that you're invested in at the moment uh the projects themselves or okay yeah so we've got uh, we've got two projects that we're exploring uh one's the shadow property and then the other one is the hook property both of them are outside of the athabasca basin we are approaching our exploration uh, quite differently from what most of our peers are doing and that we call our strategy the Athabasca 2.0. It's different from everybody else because we're exploring for mineralization in the basement rocks. Again, I've, I've done a, a lot of study on this growing up with the work that other people have done, but most of the mineralization that you see that has been discovered in the Athabasca area has actually all been in basement rocks. Uh, there's a term that was coined back in the 60s and 70s about unconformity related uranium deposits. And that has actually driven people to explore for those type of deposits uh, with horse blinders on. So not taking into account what the real picture is, what the real model is. So we've, you know, we've gone back, we've uh, basically brought a new model forth and that is our exploration strategy going forward. So we're looking for deep structures. We're looking for the plumbing system because that's what really matters. And again, you can take that into almost any deposit. It's all about the structure. It's all about the plumbing system. How do you get your fluids moving? And where are you going to deposit them? That's our strategy going forward. And I 
think it's a wonderful strategy. We have unique properties with a lot of uh, a lot of potential. So you've already been touching on this a little bit, uh, talking about the opportunity for price uh, and the fact that there's, there's not much in the market at the moment. What are the other potential opportunities for investors who are looking into your company? I get one of the other things that we have going for us is that we're new. We just listed in on June 10th of this year, so we don't have a lot of uh, a lot of shares outstanding. We've got a pretty small float. Our share price has actually been doing rather well since we since we started. But we provide a you know a, a ground ground root scenario for somebody coming in and being able to uh, to ride uh, to ride a uh, what do you want to call it to ride a discovery. And every, any investor knows that the discovery is where you make where you make your real money, and then going into development. But you know we want to make the discoveries first, and then uh, and then assess where we go from there, whether we do the developments on their own. But that's I would say that's the the big key for us. Okay, and uh, tell us a little bit more about the experience of your your board and management who's guiding the company. Absolutely. So our board and management are mostly from the ore finders group: um, Charles Beaudry, Stephen Stewart. Uh, Gotham, and uh, our CFO is from uh, Rider Investment. So we, we, we've got a pretty unique board, uh, guys who have been in the industry for quite a while now, guys with um, the financial backing uh, between Charles and myself. We form the technical group, so Charles has over 35 years of exploration for multiple commodities. Uh, you know, he, he's been around, he knows uranium, he's been in the Athabasca Basin. Myself, I've done 14, 15 years in the Athabasca Basin itself as well. So I tend to call that my backyard. I think we've got a very strong team who know how to take the company forward and maximize our shareholder return. And that's exactly, that's that's our game plan going forward. Okay. Um, I mean, you're already touching on this, but how, how will their and your experience be used to drive the growth of the company? Everybody in this company has a role to play. We all know the roles to play. And that's that's where we're, you know, that that's what we're using to go forward. So again, a lot of my focus will be on getting the story out there as we're doing right now, uh, the technical side of things, and just and just building this this whole shell and really pushing it forward, pushing the envelope forward. Uh, yeah, honestly, I think this is a fantastic team. I've I've seen what Stephen and Orfinders have done, and especially with some of their other properties and their other projects. Uh, they've done a wonderful job, and I'm very happy to be working with these guys. So I, th- I think we've got a preeminent team here who can just make the right moves, make it happen correctly, and make it all successful. Okay. And as we begin to wrap up, what will be the next milestones that you're looking to achieve? We're looking at kickstarting our exploration efforts on both the Shadow and Hook properties. So Shadow, Shadow in itself is very unique. It's This is something that has never been staked. So we're walking into virgin ground. It, it, it's quite amazing. It's again, this goes back to the way people were thinking about exploring for uranium in the Athabasca. It had to be you had to have that sandstone cover. You had to have it, but no, that's that's not true at all. So we're looking at the basement rocks. We've and you know, we've stepped out from the basin, thinking, well, we know that the sandstone itself. You make a discovery there, and if it's you have enough sandstone cover, it's going to be brutal to mine to explore to export or sorry, exploit. Uh, we don't want those issues. Let's go into the basement rocks where you can open pit something. And that's that's been the strategy coming forward. Uh, Stephen actually, you know, getting this thing going, uh, he was of the opinion that we needed, you know, let's look for something that's unique. You know, we don't want to follow everyone's on and everyone's coattails. We want to set the new trend. So we've done that. We're doing that. So Shadow needs Shadow needs a complete set of of new work on it. Again, it's, it's never been explored. There's no one been on the ground. There's no. There's been no air coverage. So our first step is to get, gain some airborne geophysical coverage, learning what's underneath the rocks. And again, we're gonna we're gonna fly a survey that will allow us to see deep structures, allow us to see uh, make some deep geological interpretations, which will allow us to identify um, targets near surface that look far more promising. So that's. Uh, after after we get that information back, we'll you know we'll put it all together. We'll see what we're seeing, and then hopefully be able to get boots on the ground, just to assess with uh, assess the rocks that we can actually see on the ground, with, and match that up to the geophysics so we can refine our model even further. And then by that point, uh, 
we'll be able to assess if we need to do some ground follow-up geophysics or if we can simply have drill-ready targets and then we can be drilling by the end of this year, early next year. For our Hook property, which is adjacent to the Athabasca Basin, uh, again, it, it, that's an area that has received quite a bit of exploration. So there is uh, historic assessment reports and these go back to the 60s, 70s, 80s. So we are currently compiling all of that information, uh, building up a model on that, trying to refine what has been done. Uh, you know, do we like what we see at what's been done? And then how do we how do we go from there? Again, do we need do we need another property wide geophysical coverage? Do we need ground surveys? Uh, are we going to be drill ready by the time that we get this assessment work done? So that's uh, that's where we are. And then obviously we're we're still actually actively seeking out um, other other uranium properties, not just in the Athabasca Basin area, but uh, anywhere else in the world. Okay. Uh, I'm going to ask you what, finally, what are your medium and long-term plans? But uh, so it looks like you're looking for new properties and, and beyond that. Yeah. Yeah. We just want to kickstart our, our main two properties, Shadow and Hook. Uh, we want to get everything rolling before, uh, before the uranium spot race really takes off and hopefully have a discovery made before then. But again, we're keeping our, our eyes and ears wide open and just looking to see whether, what other opportunities are out there for us. Uh, we're totally focused on uranium. We believe in nuclear energy. We believe it's it, it's a way forward for for our whole civilization to move. Uh, with everyone talking about we have to meet climate change, we have to reduce pollution, and CO two. Uh, I had a had a colleague actually the other day that I was that I was talking with, and he made a very good point that in a lot of these countries uh, or certain cities where since this COVID has been going on, they can see blue skies now. You know the pollution's gone. And so once once all of this comes back, uh, once once the world starts operating as normal again, and you get you know the pollution starts coming back up, these guys are just going to sit back and say, no, we're not going to take this anymore. We want we want you know this clean style of living. Being in Canada, being in Saskatchewan, you know I see blue skies all the time. The air I breathe is I'm going to say delicious <laughs> because <laughs> I've been to these polluted cities. And it's gross. So yeah, people are going to want to see this. You want to breathe like that? You want to see blue skies? Go nuclear energy. There's, there's no doubt about it. It's, it's the cleanest, most efficient, and reliable energy source we have available to us. Excellent. Well, James, thanks very much for your time today. Thank you very much, Jesse. Take care. This has been a production of Executive America, a division of Romulus Rising Proprietary Limited. All rights reserved. You can stay up to date with Executive America, including our publications, newsletters, and podcasts by visiting www.executiveamerica.com and clicking on subscribe.